Open Inc. Open.inc. When we first decided to do this, we launched, we, we stood it up onto a dev site and we began working on it. We uploaded a bunch of Catherine's documents onto it and a bunch of other things. Within a few days, it was immediately attacked by Chinese actors and not just attacked, but attacked and stripped. It was cleaned out. Generally, if you have an attack on a server, it's a DDoS attack and they're just trying to take it down. This was a, not just an attack, but it was a penetration. And on their way back out, think of it as sort of reformatting your server for you on their way out. Gee, what a shame. Okay, so those that is Greg Phillips and uh, True the Vote founder Catherine Engelbrecht. And if you are one of our viewers who has seen Dinesh D'Souza's uh, film uh, 2000 Mules, you will recognize them as the stars of 2000 Mules. They have made extraordinary allegations uh, of, of uh, that they have uh, ample evidence to prove that the election was stolen and that Trump is actually the rightful president. They have been asked for this evidence by uh, officials in Arizona and and elsewhere. They have continuously said, you know what, this evidence is coming any day, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so now they have a new explanation uh, that they uploaded their evidence, I guess every copy of it, uh, to a, a, what he called a dev site. And the Chinese actors came in with the most sophisticated hack ever, wiped out all of their evidence and then reformatted their server. The implication being that the evidence uh, is is now gone. He, d he does not, get into how uh, these these Chinese hackers uh, it pulled off such a sophisticated, the most sophisticated hack you can ever imagine because it like goes back into the actual computer that uploaded them and also trashes them there. Uh, yet somehow uh, they were so unsophisticated that they left a little uh, made in China note on, on the way out. He doesn't explain how he knows that these are Chinese actors. He doesn't explain why uh, China would have undermined him. I suppose they would say it's because they would pr prefer to have Biden as president than have Trump reinstalled once the 2000 mules evidence is in there. And so to, to me, this this feels like, oh, and, and, late, and later they say to, mules is over. Like we're moving on. There's less than 90 days to the midterms. It's time to focus on the on the midterms. I, I don't I don't know if you can just take a grift and just put a cap on it like that and say, you know what? We're done with this. Uh, real shame. We're going to keep looking for evidence. Uh, in the background uh, to, to justify these outlandish claims that we made, uh, which are completely false. Uh, but uh, we're going to move on right now. Like you can't, how do you, like how do you whip people into a frenzy by telling them that you have this evidence that the election was was stolen, uh, and then say you know actually we don't anymore. And but it, it's time to move on. Like if people actually believe it. They shouldn't. They shouldn't move on. Now I think anybody with a brain should be able to watch that and be like, oh, I was had. This is ridiculous. I don't know, well, Emily. What was your reaction to, to this? Like, and this is just, this is just a piece of it, and people can watch the whole thing if they want. But good lord. Well, it's it's funny that you just said people with a brain should be able to watch this, be like, eh. uh, because uh, yes, I think that's that is the case with a lot of these these claims um, that are outlandish, and yet our betters uh, over at Google and, and YouTube insist that we say uh, because you know, of course, you the viewers are too dumb to figure this out for, <laughs> for yourselves that the election was not stolen. You can't watch obvious grifters sort of spin their their webs and figure that out on your own. So, uh, or or God forbid, you disagree with us. Um, because you know we're we're of course the anointed uh, the, the anointed ones to deliver the information and and if you disagree with us you must we must talk down to you and tell you what is true and what is not um, which is absurd mm -hmm. but I mean from my vantage point that yeah that's a, that is a good indication that this is a grift and <laughs> it's actually quite frustrating I think the grifters in the space are very frustrating because honestly the evidence that the election was sort of rigged by money is out in the open like it was in a time magazine story that molly ball wrote they were bragging about being a well-funded cabal of people who were trying to like those are the exact words from the story uh, who are pouring mark zuckerberg's money into uh, dem leaning areas to increase vote totals in those places um, and so i think you know focusing on the dominion voting machines and chinese hackers um, is not super helpful especially because honestly uh, we are vulnerable to hacking from foreign powers in serious ways and this makes uh, that all the more easy to ignore and sort of put on the back burner uh, because it it makes it easily associated with uh, french conspiracy theorists and in an, in an environment like this where the trust deficit 
is so high, first of all, the last thing people need is YouTubers lecturing them on what is true and what is false, or journalists who have, have uh, you know, as, a, as an industry, has failed them in different ways over the years, um, you know, telling them what is true or false. That makes people just like less trustful, period. Um, and uh, what they also don't need are, are grifters who close up shop um, and just walk away uh, when, when the grift has been emptied or, or when you've sort of squeezed the sponge as dry as it can get. Right. And, and, and you can see him it's planting the seeds for you know, future donations there saying like, however, you know, one video that we still have, you, there's, there's glare on a windshield so you can't tell who's in the car. Uh, but there's this really sophisticated AI affiliated technology that uh, that we have access to that would be able to, you know, go through that windshield and tell you who's driving that car, identifying one of these 2000 mules. And so, you know, he, and he talks about how expensive it is, which is obviously, you know, keying up, you know, uh, well, we're going to need we're going to need your help uh, chipping in here so that we can make this happen. You know, Crystal uh, Ball over at Breaking Points watched the 2000 mules like w right when it came out and did a great uh, radar, whatever they call their radars, lookers, or whatever they're called over there now, um, where, she, where she runs through like th the actual evidence that Dinesh D'Souza is is presenting, and 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 it completely falls apart. It's like there's a, there's this allegation that there are 2,000 mules who are like who are shipping you know tens of thousands of fake uh, ballots around the country, uh, you, yet no no evidence of them. Right. Like just pure just pure speculation. Like. That, that all of this could happen uh, at this at this scale and you wouldn't have a, a single kind of uh, piece of video evidence of this happening it beggars belief the only thing that they had was that thing that we covered months ago of this one guy uh, who who took a picture of five ballots in a in, in I think the Atlanta area and and, and put them in a, a in the postal postal service they investigated that turned out he was he was bringing his family's you know, he was the guy who brought the family's ballots. Like, why is he taking a picture? Everybody takes a picture of their ballots now. Like, everybody that goes into a ballot booth does, does a little selfie, takes a picture of their thing. That's actually, a, it's I'm illegal. pretty sure it's against federal law, but yeah. everybody does it. Yeah, <laughs> they post them right on Instagram. So it's like, what do you mean, why was he taking a picture? Why do you, Why are you taking a picture? Why does everybody take a picture of their ballot? It's just, it's just what we do. We take a picture of everything we do. Uh, and so that was the one thing that they had that was raising suspicion and that turned out to be a a, fam a, a family, a, you know, a guy that was just taking his family's ballots, uh, you know, to the to the mailbox. So, uh, even so, in his two thousand mules, which has made I think millions of dollars, uh, you know, there's there's really nothing there. The the promise of future evidence uh, to be revealed later uh, looks like uh, that later is going to get pushed until I guess the Chinese Communist Party falls and we can search through their archives. <laughs> and and we'll be able to find the evidence that they built, uh, but uh, for and for the YouTube censors, uh, I'm obviously joking about that. <laughs> well, you know, it's again like the media has been so uh, because they have this idea, this this very patronizing view of their world or, or of their role in the world, um, and like in a again in a healthier political and media ecosystem, there would have been really good reporting on what was actually happening. But the rush to shut down any legitimate questions about any evidence, um, it looks just like what it looks like is suspicious to uh, people who have the privilege of not spending every day focused on these issues. Um, like we have to read every scrap of news and you and I are like on Twitter reading every new story um, for people who have the privilege of not living like that. <laughs> like they, these things look extremely suspicious and to some extent they actually are nefarious. Like they actually do believe the public do, shouldn't have that information because uh, the public is too dumb to accept it and, and make that decision whether it's true or false on their own. Um, and so that creates the space for grifters. Um, the, the media is the one, like, does that take any of the responsibility away from the grifters? Absolutely not. But it does mean that the media has a role in creating the space for them to thrive on the fringes. Um, and uh, be because people genuinely don't trust the media, they have good reason not to trust the media. And so they like, look to other people um, because they have very real concerns. And they've seen a lot of real problems happen in the country. Um, and they can make their own decisions, like the adults that they are instead of the journalists who do whatever it is that Taylor Lorenz does all day. Um, so on, on that note, uh, <laughs> we should wrap up Rising Fridays. <laughs> 
Yeah, and why did why did Greg and Catherine wait so long to tell us about this hack? But anyway, yeah, uh, but yeah, Christmas Peace was here, great. I agree, that was a good one. It was that was a good one. Yeah, but so uh, thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll be we'll be back uh, next Friday. Have a great weekend. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, do all all of those different things, and check out the podcast too. Um, if you're if you're not already, that's a pretty good way to to get the show. You can you can just you know roll all all the way through. Uh, without without wrestling through YouTube's uh, algorithm or anything else. And you can get that anywhere you download your podcasts. The good news is that Ryan is apparently going to be back from the Vermont Bureau in studio next Friday, drinking all of the coffee and making me get the bottom of That's the pot, right. uh, not letting the <laughs> brew the vanilla bean coffee because Ryan is just too good for vanilla bean. <laughs> oh, man. The van- I, I like a vanilla bean every now and then, but not every day. <laughs> Well, we'll have plenty of coffee next week, and we'll have a lot of fun with Ryan back in the studio. So make sure to stay tuned for Rising Fridays. Make sure to subscribe, and we will see you then. Have a great weekend, everyone.